Welcome to the 1000 Days Sober YouTube channel. My name is Lee Davey. I am not an alcoholic. I refuse to be anonymous. I am someone that doesn't drink alcohol. And I spend every waking moment of my life helping other people do the same like right now. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, before I continue, make sure you press pause, get over to www.1000daysober.com, sign up there for our blog posts, sign up there for uh, advance warning when our YouTube clips are going to go out, our podcasts are going to go out, sign up for our wonderful podcast show notes, our wonderful podcast workbooks to deepen your knowledge on each and every episode, and if you're really up for it, if you're really brave, if you want to change your freaking life, Book a 30-minute call with me and we'll see if we're a good fit to work together and take you 1,000 days sober. Do you have what it takes to be 1,000 days sober? We'll see. Anyway, come here. Come here. I've got something to tell you. So, um, when I was 18 years of age, I went on holiday with a friend of mine and his wife, okay? And on the first night that we were there, I got absolutely smashed drinking brandy sour. And I woke up the next day uh, with 20 odd stitches in my arm uh, with a paper kind of gown on with my butt hanging out everywhere completely alone no stuff nothing um, and I was really abusive to the doctors there was a guy in a room with me who was on some sort of life support machine or something it was a nightmare right and the doctor told me that I'd been stabbed okay and that I was lucky whoop, I was lucky um, that um, I didn't bleed to death because I was so drunk and I was in such a state. And that night I managed to I spend the night and then the next day I flew home on my own. I remember I was flying home, I had one arm. I was in so much pain. And I told my colleagues who I was on Hollywood, do not tell anybody about this, right? And they did. They told their family and, and that got to my mum because we live in a small valley. So she hears... Oh, actually, my sister heard in in um, in playgroup that um, her brother had been stabbed in Cyprus, and then my my mama doesn't hear nothing. So they thought they th thinking I could have died, right? And now you would have thought that at eighteen years of age, like already, like this is just I've been in so many scrapes up till this point anyway, and so many fights and so many violent episodes through drinking. You think that I would have stopped drinking in that moment? Do you know what happened? Do you know what, do you know what I did? I took that story that I, I nearly died, the story of me nearly dying, and I turned it into a joke. I made it a joke. And do you know what? When I told it, everyone laughed at me. Everybody who loved me, everybody who was in my inner circle, they laughed at me when I told that joke. Some of them even said, late, late, late. Tell that joke again about how you nearly died in Cyprus. And they were laughing and joking, right? Now I want you to think right now, what the fuck's going on? Why did I do that? And why did people laugh with me? Have a think about it. Okay, what did you come up with? Yep, good, good, right, okay. Well, you're spot on. What happened is an instrumental part of alcoholism being an invisible, violent, and dominant belief system on why we believe that it's okay to drink a powerful drug, an addictive drug that kills 3.3 million people a year. It's one of the tools of the belief system that allows us to forget and to um, not even acknowledge all the damage and destruction that alcohol can bring into your life. And it's called absurdity. We make the drinking of alcohol and the disasters that befell us after that absurd. We turn them into jokes. Okay? We, if you walk into a crappy gift shop in any seaside resort in England or uh, uh, in the UK, you will see um, memes printed on badges, on uh, cups, on posters, all ridiculing and um, making absurd jokes of people getting really drunk. If you go on social media, if you just go on Google and, and type in people drunk, you will see people in such horrific states of embarrassment and shame, um, but all with funny memes. When we almost die, 
when we sleep with the wrong person, when we do the wrong thing, when we put our head through the window, when we fight with somebody, when we do, when we lose something important to us, when we break something important to us, we turn it into a joke. We make it seem absurd. And the reason that we do that is because of cognitive dissonance. We've done such a good job, as I've said in previous videos, of silencing the cognitive dissonance. And a reminder of what that is, is when you drink alcohol and you know that it is not good for you because you're puking up blood at one end and you're puking up blood at the other end and you know it's not good for you, okay? Your brain is already dominating your thoughts by reminding you of all the perceived value that alcohol provides you with. It's convinced you that if you stop drinking, you will not be a part of anybody's tribe anymore. You will be alone. You will be sad. You'll be disconnected. You will die a lonely, sad person. You will never make love to anybody. You'll never have any friends. You'll never amount to anything. That is what the world says. At no time in human history have we ever been more connected and more disconnected at the same time. And because we're so connected, it allows us to receive thousands and thousands of different data inputs every day, all designed to tell you one thing, that if you drink alcohol, you are likelier to find a true tribe. You are likelier to belong. You are likelier to be happy. And the consequences of that are clear. They're everything that a human being doesn't want. Isolation, despair, depression, anxiety, blah, 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 blah. Which is why, even today, if I mention to any of my friends about quitting drinking alcohol, one of the first things they'll say is, oh, no, 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 no. I just like a pint. I need it to socialize. I need it to socialize. It's like I cannot socialize or have friends without it. It is a core belief, ladies and gentlemen, and it is why people cannot overcome from this addiction. Where does absurdity comes in? It comes in because whenever we get a wake up call, whenever we lose something precious to us or we just hit the brink where all of a sudden our brain goes, whoop, hang on a minute, maybe drinking alcohol isn't the greatest thing that we think it is. When that happens, the defense mechanism that resistance kicks in to keep you addicted is absurdity. It makes a joke of it. It makes light of it. Hey, Lee, remember that time he got stabbed? Fucking awesome, awesome story. Can't believe it. He went all the way to Cyprus and on night one he got stabbed. That was fucking amazing. And you joke and you laugh about it instead of the truth, which is, do you know what? I went all day, I got smashed drinking this shit that is supposed to increase my social life to make my first night in Cyprus better. And I got so drunk that I can't even remember being attacked and stabbed. I have no idea what could happen. I could have been raped. I could have been murdered. I could have been killed. How can I be so stupid to put myself in that position? And what kind of a role model am I going to be for my future children if I behave in that way? I have to stop this right now. I didn't say that. I didn't do that because I was hooked into the belief system. Okay, I was hooked into the belief system and I want to bring that to you. I want to bring that to you. And the next time that you find yourself joking or making um, a disaster part of the night or the disaster part or the hurtful or the suffering part of alcohol, you make it an absurdity or you make it a joke. Remember that I just give you a peek behind the veil. I've just allowed you to see behind it. And I want you to say to yourself, hang on a minute, which which story am I going to tell myself now? The absurd, I'm going to turn this into a joke? Or am I going to really, really face this head on the seriousness of what just happened to me? Absurdity, folks. If you want to learn more about this stuff, like I said, um, jump on the 1,000 Days Sober Experience. Get personal one-on-one -on -one coaching with myself. Learn the philosophy that underpins the truth about alcohol so you can raise awareness of that truth and stop drinking and build a better relationship with you and everyone around you, man. We are power personified and it's time we stepped into it. Raise our power up, okay? Strive on. Take care.